Roderick Joseph Quinn was an Australian poet. He was born in 1867 in Sydney, the son of letter carrier Edward Quinn and Catherine McCarty. He went to Catholic schools, including the Marist Brothers School, where he met Christopher Brennan and E.G. Brady. After teaching briefly at the Milbrulong Provisional Public School near Wagga Wagga, he was editor of the North Sydney News. His first collection of poetry, The Hidden Tide, came out in 1899 and was approved of by W.B. Yeats. He never married and died in Sydney in 1949. We will review his only novel, the 1897 Most in Stain. Jorkins, the Crown Explorer, sets off to the Macdonald Mountain Range in Central Australia, to the eternal annoyance of his unnamed companion, the narrator. Jorkins has little to do with his history, however, except that he and the narrator come to rest in a cave, and there, on a shelf surrounded by the ancient bones of dingoes with shattered skulls, they find the remains of a man and an old family Bible, in the beginning of which is penned the life story of Mostyn Stane, penned about 1720, as he lay dying in the cave. He speaks of his life in England, the fame and might of his arm among the people and smugglers alike, and of the mutual hatred between him and Squire Empson, whose land lay about Mostyn's home. This is not lessened by Mostyn frequently poaching the squire's fowls. But one day, Mostyn is caught by the watchman, and though it is in self-defense, he kills the man, and Emson wishes for him to hang. What is worse, Mostyn is forced to surrender himself to Emson's men by his own father, throwing himself in front of Mostyn's sword. Taken to Emson Hall, the squire wishes to debase him in front of his ward and Mostyn's love and old playmate Cassandra, but she will not be deterred. That night, she sends a woman to drug Mostyn's guard and set him free. Mostyn running off to join Van Berg and his smugglers as they set out to sea. Coincidentally, they are part of a great armada, sent by the English to go and plunder Cadiz. Here, when taking a gold necklace from a dead man, Mostyn meets Sir Jasper Mason, who wants the necklace as a gift to a woman, and they nearly come to blows over this on top of a burning ship. But then they part ways, Mostyn returning to Emson Hall in secret, and who should he find there playing court to Cassandra but the aforementioned Jasper Mason. Cassandra then tells Mostyn when the two meet in secret that she's being pressured to marry Mason with her guardian, Squire Emson. With the help of Van Berg, two of the Squire's men and Mostyn's former guards are taken to sea, as one of them told Mostyn they alone know the location of a treasure in Trinidad. But once they arrive, they find but a withered human heart buried in a wooden box. Mostyn returns, wishing to take Cassandra with him. But just as they are to leave, the squire shoots her dead by accident, for which both he and Jasper Mason pay with their lives. Mostyn remains with the smugglers, living a wild life. All hope and happiness lost him forever. But one day, a strange, clammy fog descends upon the smugglers' bay. Smashing their ship to bits, the wreck with Mostyn aboard flung out to sea, as a sickly red rain like blood falls on them day and night. The wreck falls into the hands of the infamous pirate ship Daring Do. Mostyn here joins them, doing many horrid yet brave deeds, before taking the place of the dead skipper. But one night, they are held up in the fog by what they think is a ship of dead men. They never see them, but one on board throws a Bible on board the Daring Do, before the ship simply disappears. Mostyn, tired of his infamy and of falling prophets in the west, decides to go to the east. But along the way, he tries to prevent his men from butchering the natives of a tropical island and stealing their women. So they maroon him on the shore of Australia, where he lies dying in a cave, surrounded by hordes of hungry dingoes, who lie in wait day and night to tear him to pieces. The story is very grim and at times melancholy. One only wonders why Sir Jasper is given such prominence early on, if he plays so little a part. 